My name's Yomi Adegake and I'm a journalist and author. So I was actually born in Canning Town in East London. I lived there till I was about two, I think, um, and then moved to Croydon. Growing up in Croydon was a mixed bag. It has a bit of a reputation. It was quite notorious growing up, especially when I was in secondary school. Walking home, <laughs> you never really knew what you were gonna get. But I really liked it. I really, I still, I liked it so much that I bought my first flat here. Um, and I think, yeah, it had a real like community spirit. So I'd say I've had a few influences in terms of getting into writing. And um, my dad used to, at the time it was bore me and my little sister with stories on the way to school. And he'd like make us tell him stories as well that we like had to make up on the way when he used to like pick us up and take us home. That was actually a really big influence. My dad's a really, really strong writer, but my sister's also a journalist. And I don't think I realized that she actually influenced me more than she did in terms of her um, choosing to get into journalism. I think for many sort of like first, second gen generation, like um, immigrant kids from particular backgrounds, um, my family's Nigerian, there's a real kind of push to go into subjects that are slightly more financially stable than the arts can be, such as like, you know, being a lawyer, a doctor, an engineer, um, and seeing my sister be able to kind of make it in journalism, I think definitely inadvertently inspired me to take it seriously. I took a year out of university because I was suffering from depression and I actually remember starting a blog because I like like to write, well, I like to talk about popular culture, therefore I kind of like to write about popular culture. In terms of whether it had been as easy or as difficult to start a career in journalism without my sister's sort of influence, I don't think it would have been as easy without her influence, but I do think, I did see her struggle a lot and I did see her suffer a lot in journalism. Um, it's a very white and male and very, very middle-class industry. And she did struggle and I, that, that did actually, as much as it, her journey inspired me, it did put me off quite a bit. I'd say the biggest barrier I experienced trying to get into writing was the age-old experience without experience conundrum. Um, it was a especially difficult when I was starting out because obviously unpaid internships, which I think are illegal now, or maybe were even illegal then, I, can't, I don't know. But that was like all the rage. And I, like many other people, couldn't really afford to take unpaid internships, but still did. Um, and also it was that thing of even getting an unpaid internship or even getting a lowly paid internship when you haven't had experience before was incredibly difficult. So difficult, in fact, especially given what I was writing about, which was a lot of stuff. Like I wrote about popular culture, but I also wrote a lot about race and sexism and feminism and things that back then at least, people didn't necessarily want to hear about that much. Because I ended up having to start my own publication to kind of get my column inches up because I just couldn't get commissioned anywhere or get an internship anywhere. I've had lots of different breakthroughs um, and lots of little ones along the years because imposter syndrome is definitely a real thing. And sometimes when you feel like you've made it, you also can not be certain. So I'd say lots of people have helped me along the way, but I'd say my biggest breakthrough, or at least the moment I really felt like I was doing it seriously was when I was given an opportunity by an organization called Writers of Color, who had were, were essentially very pioneering actually in terms of trying to diversify the media industry. And they had collaborated with The Guardian in terms of trying to get more writers of color um, into the publication. It was like a real career goal of mine to write for them. And I felt a bit like, oh, I've made it. And I took like loads of copies home and stuff. That was a big moment. My advice to young people that are trying to start a journalism career now is I'd say make the most of the little that you have at your disposal, because it really can be quite a lot. You've got publications like Black Ballad and Galdem and Guap Magazine that have literally been started by young people that didn't feel like what they were saying and what they wanted to see was being reflected and they've just done it themselves. I think there's no shame at all in being a self-starter and putting yourself out there um, and making the most of those things. And though I, you know, we, we all are aware of the kind of diminishing support for the arts, there are still organisations and charities that care, obviously such as Arts Emergency, that are there and they're there for you. And I absolutely take advantage of it. Arts Emergency is so important because it's one of the few organisations that is committed to ensuring that the media landscape represents the world, represents this country. And it truly values the voices, the 
experiences the creativity of young people. It is the leading charity in the country that is doing its best to facilitate a creative industries that represents the world as we know it. Join the Arts Emergency Network and please give £5 a month or whatever you can afford to transform a young person's life.